Let's talk about staying disciplined when you're neurodivergent. Hello everyone, welcome back to my video. My name video? My po mm. Hello everyone, welcome back to my podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. Today is probably a perfect video to do a podcast because I need discipline more than ever today. My motivation is so down and I am struggling. And so it's kind of a perfect podcast for this week. I already pre-planned it. In my head, I knew I was making this podcast. And then I woke up today feeling like I got hit by a car and I just am pushing through with willpower. Obviously you can see that I'm like stressed. So let's talk about staying disciplined when you're neurodivergent or have chronic health issues. So as you guys know, I am neurodivergent and I have fibromyalgia. So I'm dealing with a double whammy of symptoms or problems or issues in which every day is a, is a guessing game of will I accomplish my goals today? Now, in order to stay on point for today's video, I did make notes. My notes are part of my discipline tools. I've recently been implementing them into my podcasts because I tend to ramble and I tend to go in rants. And some of you have requested that I get to the point a little faster. So here is a tool that I'm using. It is also very hot in this room. And so I'm distracted. Like my brain can't stop thinking about how hot I am. The way this apartment works is that the AC is in one place and moves through the house. And so it's not like there's an AC vent in this room. And in order for the AC to reach this room, the door has to stay open, but the door can't stay open because I'm filming and it'll pick outside sounds from outside the room. Oh, and there's like like wind very heavily outside. So my mic might be picking that up. And so my brain is just racing with all the ways that this podcast is not good enough to post, including but not limited to the fact that I don't like my hair right now because I'm thinking, is this the look I wanted? Is this the image I wanted today? These are all the different intrusive thoughts that pop into my head every day as a content creator that make me want to just crawl into bed and watch Papa Gut or Kidology or scroll on Instagram and make me want to do nothing. And so I think that I am probably perfect to make this podcast because if you research discipline on YouTube, there are so many amazing content creators who talk about discipline, but they're mostly for neurotypicals. Now, just for clarification, neurodivergent is a pop psych term. It's not a real scientific term. And neurodivergent is a term that I find really, really helpful because again, if you're looking at the populace, if you're looking at humans as a species and you notice that, oh, typical brains work like X and non-typical brains work like Z, okay, you're having a different relationship with reality. As you guys know, when I talk about philosophy or we talk about existential dread or introspection, I'm really talking about the desire to really know the self and then to have a relationship with existence, everything outside of yourself. And discipline is really, really helpful to stay on task when you're not feeling motivated or you don't have the tools to stay motivated. Not everybody has the willpower to just push through, but I will recommend willpower as a tool. Now, according to my notes, I wanted to give sort of examples of how I do this because, and the reason I wrote it down is because, like I said, I tend to ramble, but I really can't one size fits all discipline and neurodivergency. So in order to have this conversation, I have to use myself as an example. So I wrote down a formula once again, like I did with last week's podcast about how I, Brittany, stay motivated and disciplined in order to get things done. So this last weekend, a friend came over and we, you know, went around and did touristy things. I did fun things. I went to the beach and I overworked my body. I didn't sleep properly. I probably walked too much. I also ate a lot of things. I had fun. When you have fun, when you have chronic health, it impacts your ability to do things the following day. So right now I'm riding a wave of like four days of lack of sleep and overworking my body and probably not sticking to a proper diet. And so my fibromyalgia is like flaring up. And on top of that, my brain starts to deplete its ability to problem solve or think efficiently because it is too tired to think. So I have different sets of problems than you might have. And we all have different sets of problems, even the neurotypicals, right? But if you're neurodivergent or use that word or identify as sort of different, you have a different set of challenges. And so the idea of categorization is to help you figure out who you are, what category you're in, and how to be efficient with your motivation. So I wrote down in my notes that if you research discipline on YouTube, if you 
look at the neurotypicals and how they're doing things, if you look at Gary Vee or Tony Robbins or any of these people, they're not necessarily thinking of people with ADHD as their clientele. They're not necessarily thinking about inspiring people with borderline. They're not probably thinking about how to get a person with PTSD out of the house when every sound might trigger them. You know what I mean? So when I think about discipline, I am thinking about those things. I am diagnosed PTSD. I am diagnosed borderline. I am diagnosed um, fibromyalgia. I'm diagnosed with enough things that I have had to really sit down with myself and say, what content is for you? What motivational speaker is for you? What version of reality is for you? And truthfully, it's one in which willpower is my best friend, but also the why is what matters. So again, when I'm watching the neurotypicals do their thing and write their books and tell you to get off the couch, I'm recognizing that that's not for me. It's helpful in some ways. Have I read Gary Vee's books? Yes. Have I gone down the rabbit hole of Gary Vee? Yes. Did I find him eventually too stale for my typical or atypical brain or non-typical brain? Yes. But it's not his fault. I'm not going to look at Gary Vee and be like, this guy is so silly when I'm like, everyone looks silly to me. Everybody looks like they're trying to help somebody that isn't me while they sit there and think I can help everybody. No, you can't. You can't help it, help everybody because it's not one size fits all. So how do I do things? Well, first and foremost, right, I think about the why. Why am I doing things? So let's look at my notes. Okay, who am I got? So first and foremost, okay, why do I need to be disciplined? Well, to reach goals, that's the future. To maintain joy, that's the present. To live within my values, that's the foundation for my future and my present. Okay, to avoid temptation, that's my past. I need discipline to maintain my best life. Everyone's always on the internet talking about my best life, my best life, my best life. How do you know what your best life is? For Brittany, it was a matter of finding out who I was. What was my joy? You know, what game am I playing? Check out last week's podcast to see a more in-depth, again, formula that I utilize to find out who I am and what game I'm playing. So how do you live your best life? You're having a relationship with yourself and you're utilizing tools to maintain that best life. If I don't record the podcast today, I can't exactly do it tomorrow because tomorrow's the day I'm supposed to post it. We have appointments in town. I don't have the time. I have calls tomorrow. So I have to do it on my day off. Today is Tuesday. But because I'm neurodivergent and I really rely on um, urgency to get things done. I can't film the podcast three days in advance. I have to film it within basically 24 hours of when it's due because I just don't have the motivation. So I have to have the discipline to still get it done. I have to do it today. What time is it? 719 my time, local time. Okay. It's burning hot. I'm literally dying in this room right now. I feel so tired and exhausted. But I know that the podcast I'm putting out today has so many like meaningful tools is exactly what I want to say this week. It's exactly what I want to communicate to you. And if I don't do it, how am I going to maintain my joy? If I don't, you know, perform well at my job, if I don't keep my promises, if I don't stick to my weekly goals, which would be the podcast, my daily goals, which is always getting, you know, X amount of things done a day that are necessary to keep life moving then I will not only fail myself, but my partner who relies on me. Indiana, my cat, who's somewhere around this room right now, who relies on me to maintain a job so I can buy her cat food. I have too many people that I'm responsible for, but mostly I'm responsible for my joy. And my joy requires a lot of discipline. As many of you know, I, I've always had this dream of being Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada. And I always used to resent Anne Hathaway for choosing her boyfriend and her friends over this amazing job. When I was younger, I wanted to be a career person. I wanted to focus on being CEO. I wanted to be this bigger than life boss girl. But then I realized as I aged, as I became more introspective, as I had existential dread and challenged myself, found my joy, I want to be Anne Hathaway, and I am. I am a person that chooses my family. I am a person that will be a good family member versus a, an amazing CEO. You know, so many people, so I've covered this just in the last few podcasts where I covered this. If you're going to play the money game, if you're going to play the Meryl Streep and the Devil Wears Prada game, you see that she as a character is a neglectful wife, is a neglectful mother. It's very hard to choose your family when your job requires so much of you. And so I think in another life, had I remained maybe single or had I remained further away from my family if I didn't have close relationships with them, I think I would have killed it in the CEO game. I think I would have killed it Meryl Streep style. But I just don't 
I can't go down that journey because it doesn't facilitate my joy. It doesn't coincide with my values, right? So here I am as I'm aging and I'm realizing even though I'm Anne Hathaway, I still require a lot of discipline because again, as a person with chronic health issues, chronic mental illness, and even though I'm on top of it and in the maintenance part of those journeys, the maintenance alone is a full-time job or maybe even a part-time job, but it's a lot. It's so much. Like I know when I'm done with this podcast, I'm going to get into sweatpants, I'm gonna lay on the bed, and I'm going to give my body a break. Because right now, even sitting in this chair and sitting in this position in the bedroom is causing like pain to shoot down my legs. And so I have to remind myself that yes, we're gonna push through the pain to get this podcast done, but it's going to be so rewarding when I'm editing. I just know when I'm editing this podcast, I'm going to be like, girl, my hair looks good. I'm, I'm happy with the way that I look. I'm glad I did this podcast. I never regret the podcast after it's filmed. But I always have to push myself to get there. When I go on my live shows, which I love doing after, prior, it's so hard for me to be like, get ready to be live. Get ready to be live. I have to stay disciplined in order to do it. And the reason I do it is because ultimately it does facilitate my joy. I just am battling all these intrusive thoughts on the process to that joy or that particular version of joy that I have to remind myself that those intrusive thoughts are not exactly the consciousness that is Brittany that will feel the joy after I do it, right? Just like in last week's podcast when I talked about what game are you playing, Meryl Streep has every right to play the top CEO game. She has every right to be ruthless and cutthroat and to be accomplished in that bubble. Anne Hathaway has every right to be a size six and to leave the bubble. Everyone has the right to lead the life they want if it facilitates your joy. Now, is Meryl Streep joyful in The Devil Wears Prada? I don't know. I don't. But what I do know is that it's not my business. It is not my business to spend my life worrying about what she's doing. It's my job to stay disciplined and focused on my life to maintain my joy. One thing that I think is super important, you're not obligated to be disciplined. You're not obligated to be joyful. You're not obligated to be a good person. There's no one in the universe. I don't believe in a God. I don't think you're obligated by society to even be necessarily a good person, though I think most people are because we're trying our best for the most part. But I do think that if you find yourself wondering, why aren't I joyful? What am I missing? I would always look to discipline first. In what way am I not being disciplined? And in what way am I abusing my opportunity at life, right? So, you know, think about um, a, think about a negative chronic lazy person, not a healthy person who has a healthy relationship with laziness uh, in activity, but a person who is lazy in life, lacks so much discipline that inactivity is sort of their default and they can tend to leech or tend to be a burden on society. And I'm not talking about people with chronic illness. I'm not talking about your neurodivergency. I'm not talking about disability. I'm talking about as a person with, you know, the problems, I'm talking about people who in their spirit, in their soul, they hold one of the weakest forms of, or the ugliest forms or disgusting forms of weakness, which is to bring others down with them, right? There's a difference between being somebody with chronic illnesses and then being somebody who just their spirit, their character is to bring down others. Now, I think those people lack values, so they lack the discipline to hold those values, I think they lacked motivation, which means they lack the discipline to know themselves to get that motivation. And I think that they get trapped in a loop of a lack of discipline, which is why they don't feel fulfilled by life, but they're still getting by. If we're just a species evolved over time on a planet, right, then it doesn't take much to quote unquote stay alive, but it does take a lot to live. And living is much different than surviving. I think one of the key components to the relationship with discipline that I think leads you to a successful relationship with it is going to be balance, of course. So Meryl Streep has this really amazing discipline towards work. Or you could argue she escapes into work so she doesn't have to be disciplined in her home life. Remember, she's married multiple times and then divorced. Her children barely know her, respect her, or are active in her life. She has a very skewed relationship with the people around her. I think you could argue that Meryl Streep doesn't have discipline and that Anne Hathaway's character is learning discipline through the show or through the movie. And then within that, we as viewers of consumers have to learn to have a relationship with... Um, 
our own version of balance and discipline with the things that we want versus the things that will lead us to joy versus the things that we need. There's this particular scene in the movie, which I think we all kind of remember differently because every time I talk to people about it, they're like, oh, I remember feeling a certain way. Do you remember the scene where they're at the table with the friends and Anne Hathaway has her like fancy stuff and the friends start throwing it across from each other and start taking it and making fun of her for being like, ooh, what are the fancy people? She gets a little defensive and gets annoyed. And the thing is, in that moment, Anne Hathaway leaves a bubble and goes into a new one. I know when I hang out with my friends who are into designer bags, I sort of jump into that bubble and all of a sudden I care about what shoes I'm wearing or I care about what my purse is. And then when I jump back out of that bubble, I'm like, oh, who fucking cares, right? That relationship we're having with between bubble hopping is a relationship we're having with discipline and balance in relation to our values and our joy. So going back to, hold on here. Going back to the formula, okay, remember, why do I need to have discipline? Brittany needs to have it to maintain goals, to reach goals. That means we have a future to look forward to, right? And then to maintain joy, that's our present. In the part where Anne Hathaway is kind of shifting between those bubbles, she's really losing her sense of a goal. Is her goal to be with her friends who she likes and keeps her grounded? Or is her goal to be with those other people who like Prada bags or Prada shoes? What's Prada? What is, I don't know what Prada makes. I'm so outside of the designer bubble, but you know what I mean? Is that is that what I want? Do I want to be the Hadids? Do I want to be Kim Kardashian? Or do I want to be... Um, you know, Malcolm in the middle. Do I want to be just, fam you know, a uh, modern family? Do I want to be just like a normal person? Or do I want to be in a particular bubble where like these things matter, right? These constructs matter. These these things matter enough that I need a different kind of balance and discipline, right? The other part I wrote down here, which I think is important, is that the reason I need discipline is to avoid the temptation of my past. I think temptation is that relationship you have with the lack of balance within yourself. Oh, I'm given an opportunity to sort of not be disciplined, which means I'm going to revert to my past where I was lacking. Look, I survived my 20s, barely, because I was lacking discipline and then I got disciplined enough to survive them. But my 20s were very difficult. We're talking about a person who worked three time, you know, three jobs at a time, who struggled her best, but was always self-harming, trying to kill herself, trying to have a relationship with life and death, a person who was dating toxic person after toxic person, a person who herself was like having a unbalanced relationship with toxicity. I was drowning in my 20s. It took so much hard work and discipline to get here now. It took so much work to, to have the life that I want, to live the life that I needed, that without the sacrifice and seeking out that balance, I think I would have lacked so much discipline that in the long run, I would have ended up probably accomplishing my unaliving myself. I probably would have accomplished ending my life. I probably would have accomplished never accomplishing anything. I think there's this like fear of if I try and then I fail, what happens? Which is why I always encourage a really healthy relationship with failure, which is like failure is a part of life. You have to fail to succeed. But again, when we hear from Gary V's and Tony Robbins and all these people that like, you're just lazy, you're not getting off the couch, you're not doing X, Y, and Z, you're thinking in your brain, well, I must be doing something wrong. But what if your brain is a thing that is just so different, you need better tools? Because look, again, after I went through my existential dread, even now in this state of mind, there's no way you can convince me to sell my soul for a billion dollars. It's just not going to happen. Why? But for other people, they would absolutely do this. It's a billion dollars. But that's because their brain is so focused on how money is the only tool. And my brain knows like money is one of the many tools. But I only know that because I'm, look, I'm, again, seeking joy for Brittany. I'm not seeking joy for other people. I wrote down in my notes, literally, almost like in a journal way, I said, even as I write these notes, I'm literally basking in pain and I want to sit down and do nothing. But no, I have to make this podcast because that's what my discipline requires. My discipline requires me investing my time in my job. I love this job, but this job does not just exist. I do this for free. This podcast is free. And then I hope to make money after. P.S. Join the Discord. It's tons of fun and it's my favorite way to make money because it's cheap for you and awesome for me because you get to join and then we get to have conversations and it's really great, okay? This is the reality of being a content creator and a gig worker is that I stay disciplined to make free content and hope that it makes me money. That is so difficult. 
It is so difficult to be a content creator in that sense because it's much easier to go to a nine to five where you're guaranteed a paycheck. It's much easier to be a teacher where you're guaranteed a paycheck, but they're still hard jobs. It's just a different kind of hard. So when you're thinking about your life, you're gonna choose the path that's easiest, though it's hard. Life is hard. Basics, hard. Food, water, shelter, difficult, right? And then on top of that, you have like this neurodivergency, this, you know, lack of motivation or sense of urgency, this brain that starts to wander and then you forget what you were doing, this brain that just hyper focuses on one thing and then you lose track of time. You have this chronic pain that's aching through your body, encouraging you not to make moves. You have so many layers that are just there to stop you from accomplishing your goals. And they're all coming from inside your own brain or your own body. It's a challenge that I, I don't think people who don't experience it can ever understand, even though they themselves, neurotypicals, are challenged in their own ways. So why do I need to be disciplined? To maintain my best life. In my teens and in my 20s, I was not living my best life. I was living a life that was surviving, collecting tools to then live my best life. So how? Do I stay disciplined and how do I continue living my best life? So <clears throat> the hardest part is that you have to start today. And that is the hardest part. Like today, gosh, what a beautiful universal gift that today was so stressful for me because it's just a perfect example of you have to do it today. You have to say, okay, today's the day that I'm going to start this process. But don't overwhelm yourself. Start small. I still maintain a small to big philosophy when you're doing drugs for the first time, small to big. When you're taking on a new task, small to big. Don't overwhelm yourself. Don't promise yourself, I'm going to get so much done today. When, you know, overpromising is just it ends badly. It's almost like lying to yourself. Even in my own relationship with my partner, one of the rules is that we don't overpromise. Because when you overpromise, it sets a expectation that when it fails, it feels like abandonment or disappointment. You don't want to do that to yourself. So I wrote down, right? Um, here's how I do it. Okay, so here's here are my notes for you guys. I have my daily goals and my weekly goals. Now, I personally, as a Brittany, do not have monthly goals. I do not have yearly goals. I have a hope in the future of having a 10-year goal. But as of right now, especially since I wanted to unalive myself my whole entire life, it wasn't until 30 that I decided to keep like to actually stay alive and not attempt to unalive myself ever again. <laughs> Which means at 30, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have a savings account and I have to actually pay attention to my credit. And oh my gosh, I have to like buy a house. Prior to 30, I was not expecting to be alive past 35. So what was the point, right? So another way neurotypicals and people who don't have suicidal ideations vary is that they are probably already thinking about these things pretty early in life and probably prepare a lot better. So don't freak out if you're starting late. I, I feel you on that, okay? So daily goals and weekly goals are how Brittany, or what I am able to do as a Brittany. And so my daily goals represent, you know, sort of like things I can do within 24 hours. My weekly goals are things that I need to get done by that weekly goal. So as an example, Wednesdays are the podcasts and Mondays are the live shows. So I have to make sure that I'm preparing my spoons throughout the week to make sure that the podcast is up by Wednesdays and I have enough energy to do my live shows on Monday. So yesterday, as an example, was Monday and I went out with my friends. It was their last night in town. We went and got, you know, amazing gluten-free pizza. So delish, so worth. It was such a great experience. And then I came home from dinner and I did my live show and it was great and it was fun and I loved it. But it was one of those things where I kept wondering and I kept asking myself, are we going to do our live show today? And I told myself, like, you are doing your live show today. This is a thing we have to do today. You already told your friends. You already told your partner. You already told your spoons. Hey, get ready. We have a live show, which means that from beginning of when I woke up to when I finished dinner with my friend, I had to be conscientious and think about how I was using energy in order to have enough spoons to talk to you guys on that Monday which turned out great. That was a great live show. I'm really glad I could make it. But I'm a YouTuber. Again, live shows are free. Everything I do is for free. So I could have really not gone. Nobody is forcing me to show up. No one is forcing me to maintain my job. Nobody in society cares if one more person is functional, right? You guys are so lovely and so kind. You probably would have let me take the day off. 
you are not going to hold me accountable because you're nice and you're wonderful and, you know, you're not going to force me to be at a live show I don't want to be at. But I, Brittany, have to maintain the discipline to show up to that live show because after it was done, I was so sad I had to go. I could have talked to you for hours more. And that's the thing. I know myself now well enough to know I love this job. And even if I'm doing it for free, it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? As a content creator, we don't get prepaid. I have no guarantee of income. I do it even though, because it's just that good for me and who I am. It fulfills so many of my childhood dreams, and it's the reason why I do enjoy existence. I love posting content. But again, I still need the discipline to show up because I know that it doesn't matter, because I know I'm not getting paid, because I know you guys won't mind. It's very hard not to just sit at home and do nothing. When when I'm so tired, when my chronic pain is shooting through my body, when I'm just, you know, so exhausted, but I'm like, no, I will show up. I will show up for myself. And in turn, I will show up for you, right? Okay, so daily goals are, again, what I can get done in 24 hours. So as an example, today is Wednesday. So the goal was, oh no, today is Tuesday, sorry. Today is Tuesday, so it's my day off work, right? It's the day I don't take calls or do live shows. And on my day off, I film the podcast and I edit it because I need that sense of urgency that comes on Wednesday. So I can't do it on my actual work days. So I don't technically have a day off of work. I technically work seven days a week, but as a content creator, that's pretty common. That's pretty normal. So the only task I had to get done today was film the podcast. Since I'm in the middle of it and it's almost 8 p.m. and I'm going to have dinner after this, I'm not obligated to also edit the podcast tonight. I have enough time to do that tomorrow. But if I'm being honest, whoops, the best, most efficient use of my time is to still edit the podcast tonight. But I also want to watch One Piece before bed. So how do I make sure that I eat, watch One Piece, and edit? Well, I could stay up till midnight or 2 a.m. and then wake up at well, whatever time I need to get up because I have calls tomorrow. And then I could balance all of those things out. But then I have to get an X amount of sleep to make sure that my uh, fibromyalgia doesn't flare up, which makes my day longer tomorrow. And so then I have to balance. I'm playing like a negotiation game with myself, right? I gave myself one single task today, and that was to film the podcast, which I'm in the middle of. So good job, Brittany. But then I have to decide after this, am I going to have enough spoons to help future Brittany out tomorrow by editing the podcast tonight. So then I negotiate with myself. Okay, Brittany, I know you want to watch One Piece. So what if we do this? What if we eat? Okay, we finish up the podcast. We wrap it up. We go and eat. We watch two episodes of One Piece while we're eating. Huh? Okay, with your partner, which he loves to do. Then you edit for at least two to three hours. Then we go to bed. Whatever we got done in those two to three hours, great. But we have to go to bed X amount of time to make sure we have eight to nine hours in bed before my first call. Then we go about our day tomorrow and try to fit it in. Tomorrow's Wednesday, but since I'm in Europe, I'm nine hours ahead of my Pacific time viewers, which means as long as I get the podcast out at a reasonable time for them, I should be okay. Right? So I'm like negotiating with myself. Now the question is, am I capable of doing this? Do I have the discipline to follow the plan that I've negotiated with myself to complete? Well, that's to be seen. But yes, that is the goal. And I think I'll do it. I don't have the doubt, but I do have the worry that after I stop recording and I relax, what if my body just tanks? Which happens with chronic health, there are days in which I feel really great. I feel awesome. Then the moment I stop recording and I take off my dress and I put on my sweats, I'm like, whoop. And all of a sudden, I've sunk down into this like despair of I can feel every pain. I can feel every ache. I can feel how tired I am. And then I can't do it. So again, I've negotiated with myself for some leniency, okay? I've gotten the podcast done. That was my only obligation. Tentatively, I'd like to still edit it tonight, but I'm not obligated to. But I am obligated to make sure that I do edit it and finish it by tomorrow at a certain time. So again, it's either rest tonight, hustle tomorrow, or hustle tonight, rest tomorrow. It's a negotiation. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's so hot. 
I want to die. Oh my God, it's so hot. Now the weekly goals are next and the weekly goals are easier to accomplish because they coincide so well with the daily goals, but also they I have more time to prepare for them. So the daily goals are a little harder as an example in comparison because I wake up every day and then I have to ask myself, how did we sleep? Did we get enough of it? How's my brain fog today? Is my pain too heavy? Can I take ibuprofen today? How do I feel about XYZ? It's like I have to see how I feel and then I have to hope that I can get my tasks done. Now sometimes and normally I kind of come up with my tasks that morning based off of my spoons. I try not to do them the day before though because I know my podcast is due which is a weekly goal. I know I get it done on Tuesday which is a daily goal. So preemptively I already know I have to record the podcast today but normally let's say it's a, one, um, a Monday or it's a um, oh, uh, Thursday I would wait until I woke up Thursday morning to ask myself, what do we want to get done today? And I know preemptively, again, because you can start to know your own self, that, well, I'd like to put out an extra video on Friday, Saturday, so maybe we film Thursday, or maybe I hope to get enough sleep Wednesday to get the energy to film Thursday. It's like you're asking yourself, what are we, what can we do? right? And all of us are playing different games. So if you're in school, if you have a nine to five, if you are a volunteer, you're going to be dealing with a much different challenge ahead of you, but the same premise exists, right? And maybe you have a job where you get called in in middle of the night and then it's even harder to plan for your spoons. So make sure you're having a balanced relationship with your chronic health issues, your neurodivergency, and the expectations of the game you're playing within the bubble you're playing it in. The funny thing about how my brain works is that I can, lo- like, I can mentally, no, I can fit, well, how does I, I can logically understand that I need to film the podcast today. But my emotions will dictate how and when. So today, I waited all day. I just like all day, I was out of it. I was almost disassociated from my body. I was so tired that mentally, mood-wise, emotionally, I was just completely not doing any, I couldn't do it. So I did other things. I mostly spent time with my partner. I tried to get myself prepared. I got ready. It took me hours to get ready today because every movement I made hurt. Every time I tried to do my mascara, every time I did a curl, every time I put on the stress, like it was a lot of effort and I, my arms are definitely paying for it. Like with the fibro, it's just like a constant aching, horrible pain right now there's like a pain shooting down my leg and I'm I'm having like a horrible relationship with my gut right now probably because I've been like over abusing it it's like this is just my life I'm not complaining I'm acknowledging so then I can have a better relationship with how I negotiate how to use my spoons so I can logic my way I can understand what's happening but I also am sort of a slave to my moods and I can't just film because I have to. I have to wait until the right moment occurs. So what I did today is I woke up. I knew I was kind of mm, fucked. And so I I slowly gave myself an opportunity to build up into an evening where I could film. Ideally, I would have filmed at 11 or 12 or 1 or 2, but I didn't start filming till what, 7, 6.30, 6.45. That's pretty late in the day, but that was when the mood hit me. That's when I could do it. That's when I gave myself permission to get it done. So see how I still accomplished my goal, but it was on the timeline of my mood. Do you get what I'm saying? I know there's these people in the world and I love them who can just say like, we're gonna get it done now. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. I can do that sometimes on willpower. I can push myself through. But if I'm given an opportunity to be kind to myself, to be compassionate, to be slow and patient, I will get it done when I can get it done. As long as it gets done in that 24-hour, you know, time span, it's not really important if I get it done at 11 a.m. or if I get it done at 6. It's just important that I get it done. I think when I hear neurotypicals or people who aren't like chronically ill or anything talk about laziness, I think they do conflate and confuse neurodivergency and unique challenges with laziness, laziness being inactivity. And I think that's reasonable, but also unreasonable depending on the person. I do think there are a lot of neurotypical, or sorry, there are a lot of neurodivergence and people with like ADHD, autism, all these things who are lazy and also are neurodivergent. But I also think right? There's a healthy lazy and toxic lazy. I think there's also just working at your own pace, which the world isn't built for. The world isn't built to run off the expectation of somebody who has ADHD 
and maybe needs meds and doesn't have access to it or maybe just needs the right like, therapist and hasn't had access to it. The world isn't built off of the backs of people with usually chronic health issues and that's fine but we still exist and we're still a part of the world and the world I think is you know benefits from having us in it for sure it just benefits differently than the expectation or the typical so we don't usually have books written about our lives in the same way as somebody who's you know easily able to just get off the couch and get something done right we're having a different timeline but we still get things done I still think it's possible to make things happen the reasoning has to be the thing that you hold on to, the why. So again, for Brittany's formula, we're talking about values. We're talking about maintaining joy in the present. We're talking about staying true to who I am while still doing it on my own time, while acknowledging, of course, that I'm still on the time of the construct of the bubble. So I myself decided my Mondays are my live shows. I decided Wednesdays are my podcast days. Nobody decided that for me. I decided that. And I decided to do it because I needed a deadline so I could actually have a goal. I made it up in the same way you get to make it up. Unless you're a teacher who works Monday through Friday. Unless, of course, you're a nurse who works 24-7 and on call. Unless you're a flight attendant. Unless you work for somebody else, you're playing a different game. You're still having a negotiation with yourself. What can I accomplish with the challenges that I have? All in all, we are all having different relationships with our existing, ourselves, and existence, everything outside of ourselves. If you want to accomplish something, it's all on you, which is what the neurotypicals will say. Gary Vee and Tony Robbins and all these motivational guys will be like, it's on you. You're the only one. Top G, Andrew Tate will tell you, you're the only one who controls your fate. It is true. That is true. And still we are having a relationship with existence and existing. I'm sure Andrew Tate right now feels the pressure of existence considering that existence has recently arrested him, right? And Gary V feels the pressure of existence because he's memed so hard, right? I think we all acknowledge that yes, it's on us, but it's also a relationship we're having with other people and with ourselves. So neg negotiate with yourself efficiently. I know so many of you in my audience, right? Our, my VC on Discord was just talking about this, how my audience is like borderlines, autistics, and ADHDers. And without a doubt, I think neurodivergency not only runs in my family, but runs within me. And I've had a relationship with it for my whole life. And it is one of those relationships that I do value because it makes me who I am, but it also makes me niche. I think it's one of the reasons, even though I've had so many opportunities in the world, I don't mask very well and I don't fit in very well, but I don't need to to be successful. And that's the point. You don't have to fit in. You just got to negotiate with yourself better. You just got to do enough. You just got to play the game a little bit better. And that always comes down to the relationship you're having with yourself. The world will tell you it's strictly the relationship you have with the world, but it's really not. That is a part of the formula, totally. But it always starts with you. Again, we're going to start with ourselves, ask ourselves how do we become disciplined within this game model. Then we look to the world and say, how do you stay disciplined? Then we come back to ourselves and renegotiate how to stay disciplined with ourselves. That's why you're hopefully watching this video is you're thinking to yourself, man, I really want to be disciplined. Google's disciplined neurodivergency. Brittany's video comes up. Oh, let's see what Brittany says. Hmm, this helps me. This doesn't help me. Then you take whatever I did say that helps you and then you go back to the drawing board with yourself and then you say, okay, what did Brittany say that was helpful? What did Brittany say that wasn't helpful? Then you renegotiate with yourself. I am just a tool. You are just a tool. If you leave a comment section that gives me a tool, then I go, oh, sweet. I read this comment today and it really gave me a tool. Actually, oh my gosh. I got the greatest comment on my video the other day. It really just made something so clear to me because something I've been struggling with is why I am grading, but also why am I so, why don't people on the masses understand me? Why, what is it about my neurodivergency that makes people hesitant to understand me? So, okay, I got this comment and this comment on my video said, the reason I asked the question, oh my gosh, the way I'm even phrasing the sentence, I asked the question about why does Doja Cat have success among the masses, but I don't. And someone said, I know you don't want to hear this, which is such a funny way to phrase it, because of course I want to hear this. I think neurotypicals don't want to hear it, but neurodivergence, we want to know. Tell me. Tell me what am I what am I missing? They said, I know you don't want to hear this, but Doja Cat has a vision and you don't. That is the answer. This commenter, right, gave me the answer that I had heard from other people, but they said in a way I didn't like. 
when I've been a part of business groups or I've been a part of communities, they're always like money, 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 write copy, have a vision, but they don't say vision in the way that this person said vision. They'll say like how to get a customer, how to maintain a caller. And I'm like, this sounds weird. I don't like this. I don't want to maintain a customer. I don't want to, you know, sell myself in a package so people know what they're getting. You're getting a Britney. You're getting my life, my successes. I'm not something I can package. I'm not packageable. I'm not basic enough to brand. I'm sorry. And so I read that comment and I was like, that's true. I don't have a vision for my channel. I don't have a thing I want to sell you. I just have things that I think are interesting and I want to share with you, like how to be disciplined and neurodivergent. But that is like an amazing way to reconceptualize myself on the internet. I can't tell you how many videos I've made where I've gotten millions of views, how many big collaborations I've done, but I've never taken off. And all those people I've collabed with even are variations of neurodivergent, but none of them own it in the way that I think that I'm going to frankly do and I do do here within this podcast even. I know my brain doesn't work like yours. I know my brain is unique. Unique enough, but not like special unique. Not like I'm so wonderful unique. It's just, it is what it is. It has good and it has bad. But of course, I'm not going to appeal to the masses. The masses have it easy. The masses have it hard. The masses have it different. The masses just aren't doing what I'm doing, but I'm not doing what they're doing. So we each experience hard differently. And if my hard doesn't look like your hard, how are we supposed to communicate? Right? So this idea, right, that you're going to try your hardest to mask and be normal and all, that's fine for you. But I can't do that. My values won't allow me to brand myself in a way in which I feel like I'm lying because I'm trying to be normal. Now, do I know how to play the game well enough to be sort of normal? Sure. But do I want to keep that up? No, which is why I became a YouTuber. So I didn't have to as much. But the consequences, even YouTube falls into the trap of mostly appealing to neurotypicals. That's why certain channels are 15 million subscribers, 20 million subscribers, and none of them are as neurodivergent as the pockets of the internet that I live in. And there's a reason that the pockets of the internet that I live in are variations of neurotypical and neurodivergent, and they even operate differently as well. And that's what's so crazy. And all of this, again, is a relationship you're having with yourself existing and then existence. None of it is good. None of it is bad. None of it is to judge anybody. It's to know yourself better. So when I look at content creators and I see their careers and I'm like, yeah, I can't do what you're doing, but I appreciate that you can. It's really to have a better relationship with myself. I don't have to be different than who I am. And that is because I've, I've stayed true to my values which help uh, stay consistent through my discipline. Like my discipline of being true to my values allows me to get here, which is the goal. But it is quite alienating and it can be exhausting. So be patient with yourself. It can feel really lonely when you're sticking to values that aren't typical. When you're saying I'm not going to lie and I'm not going to cheat and I'm not going to hurt people and I'm not going to you know, tell a lie about someone when the internet itself is built off that very typical expectation of human behavior, that humans lie and politicians lie and everyone is a lie. You know what I'm saying? The typical society is a lying society. My friend told me yesterday, because you know how my friends are variations of neurodivergent to an extent, not all of them, but you know, and they were saying that there's like a really strong sense of justice when you're on the spectrum and I think I see that within myself. There is a strong sense of justice I have within myself, but it's not even justice. I think it's just an authentic sense of self. I would rather die than sacrifice my authentic sense of self when I worked my whole life to find her. I didn't just work my whole life to find this woman just to throw her away for some money. Why? I never had to. I never wanted to. But discipline is at the core of that. I know it sounds weird. Like, what is this? Discipline allows me to avoid temptation. So when someone hands me a billion dollars, I can say, no, thank you. And even though the world tells me I'm crazy for that, I know that I'm not. I know that I am simply disciplined within my values. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's it. I'm tired. I'm sweaty. I've got sweat dripping down my body. 
and I'm over it. So I'm going to go eat some goulash. I hope you guys have an amazing evening, day, whatever time of day you're watching this. And let me know what you guys think because it definitely got ranty at the end because I ran out of notes. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. In my head, in real life while I'm bed, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine, not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking, yeah. Sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Da, 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 da.